Okay, so here's the fridge. Uh, so here about two days ago, I decided I wanted to change out the glycol solution. Um, I actually didn't really change it out. I, I just drained some of the thinner stuff down there and added some uh, some, some heavier uh, uh, heavier mix uh, because I wanted it to freeze at a lower temperature. I'm not using very much of the freezing capacity of the block. I'm not I'm messing around too deeply with this thing lately. Um, I've mostly just been, I built the heat pump the other day. Um, I've been catching up on some reading, uh, planning on the, the next stage, but I'm trying to just play with this thing a little bit, get to know it a little bit better. Uh, so changed out that glycol or added some glycol. When I went to fire the thing back up, it had to refreeze everything because uh, I had to let it thaw for a day or so so it, I could drain it out. And uh, so I knew it was going to take several hours. Well, once I ran it, uh, it ran fine for a few hours and then it kicked off. And then it kicked back on, it kicked off, kicked back on. Most of this while I wasn't here, I, I, I could see, the, see it on my, uh, my data logger. And um, eventually it kicked off and it just locked up and uh, it, it wouldn't run anymore. Um, so I suspect that uh, it could have been an oil issue because every time I, uh, I pull a little bit of charge out, some oil that tends to come with it. Um, and I've also beat the hell out of that old compressor. Um, I had a very unfortunate situation where I, uh, I, I allowed water and glycol to be drawn in during a, a vacuum uh, uh, because I did nitrogen test first for a, a leak and it, it, it sucked in all this liquid and uh, went into the oil and I had to change the oil several times the compressor. It's amazing that the thing ran as long as it did after that but it, it finally uh, finally gave up the ghost. So um, I had to uh, scramble and find another compressor. Well the only other one um, that I thought was suitable for the application was the little mini, mini DC. You can see the little cocaine compressor back there. Never really built much with it that really was uh, uh, any use for anything. Um, uh, it's got a decent capacity. It seems to be similar to what the other uh, compressor was doing given the same cap tube and everything else. Uh, the only drawback is it's really loud um, because it's not suspended on springs inside of the shell. It's just this rotary compressor they're sitting on just uh, rubber and uh, so I could probably do a little more uh, add a little more cushion under it to maybe take care of some of the vibration but you know everything that's metal in this thing is vibrating right now it's, it's just it's really loud um, but it's putting out some heat right now uh, hasn't been running for more than about a half an hour so our discharge temperature is uh, it's up there about buck 40 so it's 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 cooking um, one of the reasons it's so high right now is because my suction is so uh, so ridiculously high. It's at 57 right now because that uh, pan is mostly full of liquid right now. So all that refrigerant that's going through that cap tube coming out the other side is flashing off rather rapidly. Uh, the lowest temperature I have right now is a thermocouple in the bottom of the pan there, which is registering 31. Uh, so uh, it's definitely it's definitely starting to frost in the pan. Um, you can see it on the bottom of the pan from the outside. Uh, cabinet temperature 64. Um, and there's a thermocouple strapped to the bottom of the pan in the back. Um, same place the thermo or the um, the thermostat is set up there. So it's showing about 51.8. It's showing about 49. And so uh, these are usually a little bit closer, but. Um, yeah, until that uh, suction right there is 56 um, and then 63 before it goes into the compressor. That's pretty rarefied, that's pretty warm, um, so I do have a small fan running on that compressor. I don't know if these compressors are supposed to be suction cooled or not. Um, there's not a lot of mass there and uh, you know they probably don't handle liquid too well. Um, uh, probably even worse than a normal you know, uh, compressor with a shell. So uh, it's, it's pretty warm, I, I don't want to ruin the compressor, so I have my small fan running on it right now. It's not an ideal setup, but um, it'll be interesting to see how the little DC compressor fares. Um, and while I had everything apart, I pulled some of my heat interchanger apart, um, probably about a foot, foot and a half of capillary tubing I pulled off of there. So probably leaving about a foot or a foot and a half on it, because um, I was getting a lot of, a little too much heat uh, being dumped into that suction line. Uh, so, gonna have to give it a few hours and hopefully the little compressor will make it. Um, but that is a little DC 12 volt compressor. Um, we're just running through a, uh, a power supply right now to keep it, uh, keep it satisfied. So, uh, 
like I said, I'll give it a few hours. I thought I would do a video just uh, just in case it does give up the ghost as well. So, um, any questions, be, feel free to comment. But you know, I, I wouldn't recommend these mini DC compressors unless you absolutely uh, uh, need something that's that small. You know, don't expect it to be very quiet. Um, otherwise, I would go for something that's in a shell like that. Oh, that's a 12 volt. That's a Danfoss right there. I haven't run that one yet, but I'm sure it's uh, as quiet as any other uh, of similar construction. Um, these things, I mean, they're neat um, for being the size they are and everything, um, and they seem to be a little bit easier and less expensive to get than, um, than a, a shell type like that one over there. But, uh, you know, the noise it makes and the small oil charge in it, that's the other thing that concerns me about it. Um, it only holds about 50 milliliters of oil. Um, and unless you really keep your um, uh, refrigerant velocities up through all the tubing, um, it, it, there could be trouble getting that, that oil back. And you know, this system wasn't really designed with that many compressor in mind, so um, I, I would, I it would be very unfortunate if that were to occur. Uh, fortunately though, uh, propane tends to carry oil pretty well. So I'm hoping that uh, it carries back as much as it carries out. So uh, time will tell. Thanks for watching.